Today I'm going to talk about a film that may well be regarded as the unsung masterwork of Alfred Hitchcock's British period, Sabotage. Now, the reason I say unsung is that it's mentioned far less frequently than the much more popular The Lady Vanishes and my personal favorite of Hitchcock's English thrillers, The 39 Steps. Now, sure, we may be talking apples and oranges here, but in a sense, one can compare the relationship from The 39 Steps to Sabotage to, say, uh, that of Francis Coppola's The Godfather and The Godfather Part II. While most film scholars will say that the latter is the better constructed movie, uh, there's something about the first Godfather movie that uh, just resonates more with audiences. There's a breeziness and almost an air of improvisation to it that is just as lacking in uh, the much more calculated and controlled balancing of the Michael Corleone and young Vito Corleone stories. Clearly, the latter was the work of a much more sure-handed filmmaker, but the vibrancy that Coppola got on screen in the first Godfather movie is undeniable. In that sense, I feel the same about The 39 Steps in comparison to Sabotage. The former just sweeps along from memorable episode to memorable episode. To be sure, Hitchcock and writer Charles Bennett, now on their second film together, made good use of the techniques at their hand, but first and foremost, what they made was a ripping good yarn. Sabotage, on the other hand, is a, a darker film, and like Coppola's effort on The uh, Godfather Part II, was the work of a much more confident director. And it's much more of a calculated and technique-driven movie. Uh, certainly the bomb sequence, uh, where uh, the heroine's younger brother is unaware that he's carrying a bomb set to go off at 1.45 is the most harrowing suspense sequence Hitchcock ever devised. What do you want? Go on off now, having primed his audience with this information, uh, it's excruciating to watch as the boy is delayed and delayed by one thing and another until uh, the point where the editing quickens and the music tick-tocks away as Hitchcock reminds us with those constant cutaways to the clock along the bus's path of the inevitable. And in a most uncompromising fashion, rather than give us relief from the suspense, the bomb goes off. <laughs> Next, Hitchcock uses montage and subjective camera work during the scene in which Mrs. Verloc kills her husband. It could well have been a, a scene devised for a silent movie the way Hitchcock constructs the sequence. As she fixes uh, her husband's supper, she looks to her brother's empty chair at the di dining table, then she looks at the knife. And then the, the scene shifts from point of view, from hers to his, as they each make the connection to her impulse. Then finally we have those slow tracking shots as Verloc moves closer and closer to his wife until finally she's quicker to the knife than he.
Lastly, there's a device that Hitchcock would use again, much more subtly but to greater effect in Vertigo. And that's where Mrs. Verloc, having just killed her husband, believes that she sees her younger brother alive and running down the street toward her. Uh, and when she realizes it isn't him, she's disappointed. And of course, we see that from her point of view. And uh, like her, we become hopeful that he may be alive uh, until we're let down as well. Similarly, in Vertigo, there are numerous times when Hitchcock filmed Kim Novak from Jimmy Stewart's point of view, uh, building his hope and ours that Madeline might somehow be alive. And then he, Hitchcock replaces her uh, with an actress dressed in similar clothes. And like Stewart's character, Scotty, when we recognize that it isn't Madeline, we too feel disappointed and cheated. The irony of the film's ending almost anticipates um, the ending of many an Alfred Hitchcock Presents episode, most notably uh, the Hitchcock-directed Lamb to the Slaughter. That's queer. Is that girl psychic? She said that Verloc was... Dead, sir? Well, you don't need second sight in a case like this. Oh, but she said it before. Who was it after? I can't remember. So while it may not win any popularity contest, to me, Hitchcock's sabotage is the unsung masterwork of his British period. Thanks for watching.